Hello guys and welcome to this new video. I've been collecting a few tips and tricks to make your life easier in Fusion or just to share some interesting techniques. All of this will work on both Fusion Studio and DaVinci Resolve. Keep in mind that it was all done in float in a linear color space. Tip number one, multi-frame roto. If you have an animated mask and you want to change something throughout the whole animation, you can activate all frames in the multi-frame menu. Watch how the smoothing interpolation is now applied to the whole frame range. Tip number two, fast point selection. When editing a polygon mask, instead of clicking on every single point, with no point selected, you can alt-click and Fusion will select the nearest point to your mouse pointer. Holding down alt will also let you move the points. You remember to deselect the points before alt-clicking to select the new one. Tip number three, Roto shortcuts. Holding T on your keyboard and click-dragging with your mouse will rotate the selected points using the mouse position as your pivot. Hold S and click-drag for uniform scale. Hold X and click-drag for scale on the x-axis, hold Y and click drag for scaling on the y-axis. Shift B will bring up a bounding box you can freely modify. Hold Alt to modify from the center and Shift to skew and perspective. Tip number four, word by word. I've seen this one popping a lot online. In Fusion to create text animation, you rely on the follower modifier most of the time. By default, there's no way of animating position of words instead of characters. But there's a workaround for that. Add a follower modifier to your text and move to the transform tab before going into the follower. Select words in the transform drop-down menu and move into the modifier and do the same. Add then some keyframes and some delay for the desired effect. Now all you have to do is move back to the text plus tool in the transform tab and move the pivot so that the text ends up out of frame. And there you go, you have a word by word animation. Tip number five, paint overlay. Sometimes when you're painting out stuff using the clone stamp, you may need to be able to see where you're sampling from. To do that, you just have to select your source and press O on your keyboard to momentarily display the overlay of your source. You can then proceed and paint out as usual. Tip number six, paint on transparent. Most of the time, you want to be able to keep your cloning separated from the source. To do that, you'll need to reference in your paint node the source by dragging it in the specific box. This leads me to tip number 7, opacity. More than often, people merges his footage on a transparent background and uses the blend as an opacity control. but there are better ways to do it. The first one is using a brightness contrast, activate the alpha in the affected channels and use the gain slider as an opacity control. The second one, add the channel booleans and set it to clear and use the blend slider as an opacity control. Tip number 8, Invert 
with alpha. If you need to perform an inversion operation, you'll want to use a channel boolean. Setting the alpha channel to do nothing will prevent the alpha to be inverted. Most people get confused by the output of the channel booleans. All you have to do is add an alpha divide before the channel boolean and an alpha multiply after it. Tip number 9. Color suppression. Let me show you a different approach to color suppression or the spilling. Use one of the keyers, for example the ultra keyer. Sample the color you want to suppress and add a brightness contrast and remove the saturation. Make a copy of it. Then add a channel boolean and subtract the brightness contrast. Now add another channel boolean and add the previous result of the second brightness contrast. Tip number 10. Spline Editor. The Spline Editor has a lot of useful shortcuts. Hit S on your keyboard to apply a smooth interpolation to your curve. F to flatten the tangents. I to apply a step in. O to apply a step out. Shift L to go back to linear interpolation. You can right-click in the Spline Editor and choose Ease Dialog to batch edit the interpolation of the selected frames. Pressing T, you'll access the Ease controls. Shift A will apply a smoothing to your keyframes. Shift B will bring up the bounding box. I think this is a wrap for me, uh, so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.